this is that same leaf that was covered in aphids a few days later. Hi friends, welcome to Sunflower Hill. I'm Tina, I'm a single mum homesteading here in Southern Australia in Victoria. And welcome if you're new here, welcome back if you're not. Today I'm going to talk about a natural pest spray recipe that I found when I had a spider mite infestation in my house plants about a year and a half, two years ago. Um, spider mites are a real problem and mostly they're quite hard to eliminate completely, but this recipe actually did that for me. It's um, The ingredients are all harmless. I've even looked up the MSDS sheets for them and there I could not find any environmental risks at all. They're all things that are used, um, things like essential oils that people use in their house anyway. Um, and I'm very happy using this spray. However, a couple of words on it before we get started. Firstly, the recipe was not originally mine. So please have a look in the description section down below and I'll link the original video that I got the recipe from. I've modified it a bit for two reasons. One is because the ingredients um, that are listed there, some of them are a little bit hard to get for me. So I've done a modification on them. I've, they're the same ingredients, but I've, I've just done it a little bit differently. And when I show you the recipe in a bit, you will see how that is the case. Um, and the other thing is I converted it to um, metric measurements because it's American and used imperial measurements. Um, so I've con just converted it to metric to make it make sense. And also to make a smaller amount, I only make up a litre at a time, um, which suits me a lot better. Also, before we get started, a bit of a word on pest management. Um, there are lots and lots of ways to manage pests, both on house and garden plants. Um, naturally or organically or you know as low harm as you possibly can it is in reality quite hard to grow plants and grow food without ever intervening in any way shape or form with pests um, I if you have a look at my shearing video I was talking about the cherry slugs in that and I'm actually this far off um, giving up on growing cherry trees at all because of those slugs they're um, actually the larvae of uh, sawfly larvae. So you are going to get pests, you are going to have problems. In nature, things outdoors, generally nature tends to balance things up eventually. But if you want to grow a quantity of food or you want to grow, um, you know, very special house plants, then it can be really hard to just leave nature to do her thing and still be able to get what you need from your garden. So sometimes you do have to manage things. This spray is something that you can use as a, a part of the way that you manage pests. Um, other ways of managing pests in the garden include things like companion planting, making sure your plants are as healthy as possible, um, not growing monocrops, so interplanting things, uh, different species and different families of plants in, in amongst each other so that the pests aren't just getting a huge feast and multiplying like crazy. Covering your plants, as, especially as they start to get going, with things like 50% shade cloth or insect exclusion netting or bagging up fruit with insect exclusion netting, things like that. Physical barriers, um, where you plant things, when you plant things. For example, I don't plant brassicas over summer because we have white cabbage moths. They're actually butterflies, but the white cabbage moths, they just destroy brassicas over summer. Um, partly because farmers in this area grow feed brassicas to feed their sheep and cattle over summer um, and they multiply up on those. So I wouldn't have a chance. Um, so I just don't grow them at that time of year. So there are lots and lots of ways that you can manage things to minimise pest problems. Um, and the same goes with your houseplants. Obviously, if you bring in new houseplants, just keep them separate from your other plants. And this spray I spray everything down with this, even if there's no visible sign of anything, and I just don't get new pests coming in. However, you can get things coming in from outside. So this spray is only one um, in a, you know, a heap of things that are 
in your armory of managing pests, but it is useful in specific situations. Really, if you notice an outbreak of something, if you notice something starting to really build a population, really building in a particular spot on a particular crop or... Thank you, geese, for those inputs. They always have something to say. Um, or on your house plants, then this can be really useful to just knock them out before they get going. Obviously, if you're doing it outside, be very careful because you're going to be knocking out predator species of insects as well. Or you might be, I don't know. Um, but you will certainly be, if you have predatory mites and things like that, this spray will knock them out as well. So just, just use it in a really targeted way. With indoor plants, um, you do have other options, of course. You also have the option to buy predatory insects, which is can be really effective. So that's something to consider. It's just not that easy in Australia. Um, overseas, they have these little sachets that you can hang on your indoor plants and, and they have little predatory mites and other predatory insects. Um, as far as I can find in Australia, please, if anybody's found something else, let me know in the comments down there. Um, but all I can find is big uh, jars, quite expensive, like cont big containers of predatory insects. So that's not as good on house plants. It could work if you have an infestation outdoors, so if you have something outside. Anyway, all that having been said, this is a really, really useful thing to have in your, you know, your, your toolkit for managing plants and managing pests. So let's get straight to it and have a look at the recipe. Okay, so let's make up the mixture. It's uh, very, it's very simple. And once you've done it a few times, you just kind of get the hang of it and just, you know, use what you've got. The original recipe is not mine. So I am not taking um, any credit for having invented this recipe, but I've just modified it a bit um, for Australian or for metric measurements. The original uh, video is from America, so it's got imperial measurements. So I've just modified it to use metric measurements. I make it up to a litre instead of gallons and quarts. Um, and I've also just modified it a little bit to use things that I have on hand rather than um, things that would be difficult for me to get. So this is a really very simplified and it's really easy to do. So the ingredients you will need are isopropyl alcohol. hydrogen peroxide, tea tree oil, peppermint oil, and some kind of liquid soap. This is my, this says soap. <laughs> this also, it's ju just a point to make with any kind of homemade recipe. Um, do please always label any bottles that you're doing, putting anything like this into because obviously you don't want to drink it. Um, in terms of the harmlessness of these ingredients, environmentally they're, har they're safe, um, to us they're safe, but you just wouldn't want to drink them. Um, same with, you know, with most stuff. So always label any bottle that you're going to put anything in, even if it's just soap, um, just label things obviously all right so these things are all things I get these in the supermarket when I do my shopping soap I just all I always use the most mild um, environmentally friendly soap it doesn't have fragrance it doesn't have any of that stuff I suggest probably a really basic mild um, environmentally friendly soap is the way you want to go with this as well if you don't want it on, you know, on your plants, you probably don't want it on your skin either. So that's probably a good way to go. Um, tea tree oil, I'm quite sure you can get that overseas, even though it's an Australian, you know, from an Australian plant. I'm pretty sure you can get that overseas. The, as I said, the original recipe was American. Um, and yeah, peppermint oil, pretty available. Isopropyl alcohol, it would be different brand, of course. This is just what's in, this is just in the chemist. Actually, I saw it in the supermarket as well. And hydrogen peroxide um, is just commonly used for wounds. So these two things are both used for wounds. So just go to, thank you, little birdie. <laughs> so just, you know, any chemist should have 
isopropyl alcohol and hydrogen peroxide because they're used for cleaning up wounds. So very easily available, um, a very, you know, good, safe stuff to use and obviously soap. Um, now the original recipe says to use Castile soap that has this, like a Castile soap with tea tree oil in it and a Castile soap with peppermint oil in it. If that is, uh, Castile soap is liquid. So if that is easy for you to access, go right ahead and use that. That is absolutely, there's, um, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just, I can't get it very easily here. I'd have to order it online and then I'd have to pay postage and it's liquid, it's heavy, it would not be worth it. So the solution, and this is a lot cheaper, it's actually a lot cheaper to buy these separately. They're not that expensive. This tiny little bottle will last you for ages, ages and ages and ages. Um, and it, 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 so it goes a really long way. And the soap, like one bar of soap, I don't know how many liters you could do of this stuff with one bar of soap. You could use one bar of soap for years. I only have a tiny piece like that, so an inch maybe. Now I'm not being very metric either. <laughs> maybe an inch long. Um, just a little piece of soap floating around in here. And I just put warm water in it and I let that soap dissolve over a period of time. So every time I finish making up one of these, I put another piece of soap in the jar or I leave the soap, if there's already a piece of soap in there, I'll leave that. I put hot water in the jar and then it just, the soap kind of liquefies into the water. So next time I go to use it, I can just use it straight away. There was already some soap in this, um, in this jar this morning and I wanted to make up a little bit extra. So I did tip it in there. It's about half a cup. So half a cup of your soapy water. Certainly if you're using Castile soap, half a cup. Um, with this stuff, I feel like it's probably a lot more dilute, so you can use more. You can, it, it's not going to hurt to use more, put it that way, but half a cup will do it if it's nice and thick and so a little bit slimy. You want it a little mildly slimy. All right, so that's the soap. Half a cup, pour it into there, and I've already done that. I will put a little bit more in there, as I said. Um, give it a shake. Get the soap in there. Let's move these guys. And I will put another half a cup in because I do think that is probably needed. So half a cup, skull, <laughs> of soap, of liquid soap or soap dissolved in water. As I said, with the Castile, sto with the Castile soap, stick to half a cup because it is a lot thicker. Okay, so half a cup of soap liquid soap. Then you need half a cup of the isopropyl alcohol. These are all things that they're not uncommonly used for pest control in houseplants, but this recipe, this particular mixture in these proportions just is incredible. It outstrips everything else. So let's put half a cup of isopropyl alcohol in this. To be completely honest, I don't always measure it. I just squirt it straight into the bottle. But today I'm a little low on the icicle, so I'm just gonna make sure I have got enough. And that's a little bit low, so I'll probably put a bit less. I'm, I, I have a bit more, I will add more to it. Anyway, half a cup of isopropyl alcohol. Okay. The next ingredient, and these, these actually kill bugs on contact. The isopropyl alcohol kills bugs on contact. It's excellent for things like mealybugs, spider mites. It's well known that isopropyl alcohol will kill them, but usually it's um, used by wiping down the leaves and individually dabbing it on the bugs. That is incredibly time consuming. I don't have time for that. And I reckon most people, um, don't get rid of all of the pest infestation because that's really, you know, tedious and time consuming. And some will always survive that. This you can spray on. The soap is also a well-known thing. It suffocates insects. It literally puts a coating on the insect and stops them breathing. Insects breathe and um, through and mites and things like that breathe through their body, through their exoskeleton. They have tiny little spirals that they get oxygen through. So the soap suffocates them. Okay, next to go in 
is the tea tree oil. Tea tree oil is amazing stuff. It kills the eggs as well as killing the adult, particularly spider mites, but um, it, it kills the bugs as well. I say about 30 drops when I write down this recipe. It's because I don't count. I just put in heaps. There'd be 30 or 40 drops going in here. A lot, put a good lot in it. I've never had this damage any plant, but do, okay, so lots of it, lots of it, but you know, 30, 40 drops roughly of the tea tree oil. And next we'll pop in the peppermint oil, same deal with that. The peppermint oil is to um, retard insects, any other insects coming back. They don't like the smell of peppermint oil. Spiders don't like it and spider mites certainly don't like it. So let's put in about the same amount of peppermint oil, so 30, 40 drops, or do as I do and just put heaps in and <laughs> there you go, all good. No, you probably when you're first making up this mixture, measure it. Um, the, the reason I don't have exact measurements for this is because in the original recipe, it says to use the Dr. Bronner's liquid soap with these already in them. And as I said, I'm, I'm kind of have modified it because I don't have access to that. So that works well, extraordinarily well. Last ingredient is hydrogen peroxide. And it's the main thing that you need to be a little bit careful with quantities of. The original recipe, again, I, um, thanks geese. So again, um, the original recipe says 1% hydrogen peroxide. All I can get here is 3%. So I have worked out that two or three drops in a liter of water is about right. This is one that you don't want to overdo. Do measure it. I just measure it into the cap and I eyeball it because I have measured out how much that about how much that is. So, you know, one, two, that's about three drops. Don't overdo that one. Uh, maybe refer to the original recipe. As I said, I will link that down below in the description. Um, refer to that original video for the quantities on that if you're not sure. I just did the calculation because I could only get 3%. I just did the calculation, you know, of the dilution. It's, you use, you know, less basically in the same amount of um, water. Okay, so now let's check we've got everything. We've got the alcohol, yes, soap, yes, hydrogen peroxide, yes, and tea tree and peppermint oils, yes. All right. I couldn't do this out here. I couldn't film inside. Um, normally I make this up in the laundry, but I couldn't film in there. So I've made this up outside. I will now go inside. I'll get my son to film making this up to about a litre. Let's go. So I have some aphids that have showed up on my houseplants. They're the houseplants that are right by the window in my bedroom, which is why they have aphids because it's hot, it's been hot. And so at night I leave the window open um, with just the fly screen on. So the little buggies like to come in there. Aphids are small enough that they can get through the fly screen. So I do have aphids on the um, plants in my room. So they are big enough that I can film them and film the aftermath. I have actually treated a plant with aphids and I have filmed that. So I'll pop that in as well. Give you a few examples of it working. I can't do spider mites because this stuff completely got rid of spider mites in my entire house plant collection. Um, there were a few on a plant on plants out in the bus, but again, I've zapped them with this and they're gone now. So I can't really show you, but it's it's very effective against spider mites. I don't have them anymore. Um, the one thing to be mindful of with this is that it does kill all of those small insects. So if you've got actual spiders on your plants um, and please remove those. I mean, maybe you hate spiders and you would kill them anyway in that case, you know, whatever. But if you don't want to kill spiders, uh, remove those from your plants first because it does kill spiders like that. 
Um, I have accidentally got uh, spiders when I first did it and didn't realize quite how lethal it was to spiders. Yeah, so it's uh, that's just something to be mindful of. Also outside, of course, there's all sorts of good bugs. There's predatory bugs, all sorts of things. This is mainly something I use on my house plants and my plants that I'm growing in the bus or in a greenhouse. Um, if you use it outdoors, just be very targeted with it. Only use it on something that's gonna cause a real problem if you let it go. And be really targeted, get rid of that population, you know, spot spray and um, then let nature do the rest because nature's outdoors I rarely have problems with pests but you do sometimes I know a friend of mine has had an outbreak of black aphids this year and has lost a lot of um, plants to that a lot of um, her beans and things like that so if you get something like this that this will absolutely fix that problem and then you can get back on top of it and then nature will be your friend and the good bugs will come back in and you won't have to deal with it anymore hopefully all right so let's just go and uh, look at, at at how this is effective against some bugs <laughs> the plant you want to make sure you completely drench the leaves get underneath them because pests usually sit underneath the leaves they prefer the abaxial side of the leaf the underneath of it so make sure you absolutely saturate the plant particularly if you've got something really pernicious and annoying like spider mites but with anything better to get rid of them and do it uh, a couple of time so give it a couple of treatments about a week apart especially for something like spider mites mealy bugs those sorts of things um, i have tried it out on spider mites mealy bugs and aphids kills all of those um, i reckon it would kill other things too i reckon it probably kills thrips and things like that but i haven't tried so i can't um, really say for sure but be interested if people try i'd love you to let me know all right, so just saturate the plant and then a bit on the soil as well. And that's all you need to do. Both sides of the leaves, any new emergent leaves like this one here, make sure you get right in and get into that as well because they might have laid eggs in there. You need to really saturate everything that you spray. Okay, so this is that same leaf that was covered in aphids a few days later. I did have to spray it a couple of times. <laughs> Resilient little buggers, but got rid of them in the end. And as I say, these are indoor plants, um, so nature would not have taken care of it. And, you know, it, they do get out of control outside as well sometimes. But what's left of them is well and truly dead. So covered in both spider mites and aphids um, and again it was my fault I hadn't looked after them sufficiently now it's much happier that it's potted up in this much bigger pot but these um, these capsicums were really struggling and if you grow food in a, um, a space like this I'm in the bus at the moment um, you'll find you'll have probably more problems with pests and things like that and it's just really got the problem under control you can see the plant suffered this plant particularly suffered um, but it's really got the problem under control and the plants springing back in fact it's not just got it under control it's got rid of them that's that's the beauty of this 
little concoction that it actually gets rid of them there's nothing there's no no pest left on that and um, the plant can get going again and yes this is a variegated capsicum how cool is it couldn't resist so pretty I love the combination of um, form and function I guess that leaves damaged by spider mites you can see the the um, it's a bit chlorotic there but um, it'll recover now and it is getting fruit as well so I'm interested to see that I think they should be variegated too so stripy capsicums <laughs> so yeah I really like the combination of plants that are, look great and are aesthetically pleasing and that um, grow food and perform other functions So this is one outdoor use for um, the natural potion. Just a word of caution using this outdoors, it does kill spiders and you don't want to kill spiders, particularly outside in the garden. So what I'm doing here, I've just noticed that um, there seem to be some rather large, rather woolly mealy bugs on this apple tree and I just don't want them to get, uh, get out of control, don't want them to take over the tree. So I'm just going to spot editing Tina here just jumping in to say that I absolutely 100% bizarrely misidentified these creatures they are absolutely not um mealybugs at all they're not mealybugs I have used this spray on mealybugs it it knocked them straight out they died as soon as I put it on so it definitely does work on mealybugs but these guys are woolly aphids they are not mealybugs it does still work on them but uh use it as you would for aphids Get in every last one that you can and make sure you respray every two to three days until they're completely gone. Okay, back to Apple Tina. So I'm just going to spot squirt them and um, it takes care of them straight away without, um, you know, without any nasty chemicals. Um, you really don't want to let mealybugs get a hold. I, f I do find mostly outside nature takes care of pests, but sometimes um, conditions, sometimes particular conditions, you know, every single year seems to have different environmental conditions that uh, encourage different bugs. I've actually found... Um, and this definitely works on mealybugs. I have tried it on my houseplants, which is, you know, it's a massive bonus of doing both houseplants and outdoor growing because um, there's a lot of knowledge and information that seems to get stuck in, in one or the other and really um, cross-pollinating the knowledge from indoor growing to outdoor growing and vice versa is so valuable it's just so valuable I've learned so much from both spaces and I've applied things you know to both spaces so that's an that's an outdoor use for the um, the natural spray that I make up and it is really valuable that way for just spot spraying things if if the conditions are letting something take off I also was talking to a um, online friend about um, aphids in her space she'd had black aphids just absolutely take over and destroy everything and this stuff definitely kills aphids I've used it on that um, curly sue the epiphyllum inside and um, it certainly kills black aphids and any aphids I've tried it on so it's a really good general you know murderer of pesty bugs without any um, nasty you know environmental or personal health consequences I'm loving this apple tree that's why I'm lingering on it <laughs> such beautiful fruit they're not quite ready yet but it's some sort of heirloom apple just wanted to show two down the bottom here um, that these shoots here are oh, commonly called water shoots they're just shoots that have grown from below the graft so this is a grafted tree friends gave me this tree they'd grafted it themselves um, but that doesn't make any difference this happens to grafted trees that you buy or grafted trees that you graft yourself it's just the the rootstock is going to be a really really strong tree 
um, that's why it's chosen as a rootstock. It'll have it'll be a strong tree, but without the fruiting characteristics that you want. So the tree that's been grafted on top, this one has beautiful fruit, and the tree that it's been grafted onto or the rootstock is really tough and resilient. So you do get growth from the rootstock from time to time. I'm going to come back and just cut this off. Otherwise, all of the energy from that rootstock is going to be going into this and not into the, the fruit that I want. Okay, friends, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, that was fun. I, I quite like making up that little potion. I call it a potion, <laughs> which just kind of makes it, I don't know, sound cuter or something. It is extraordinarily effective. It's incredibly effective against spider mites, very incredibly effective against, um, word, the little woolly guys. Oh, why can I never remember the name of the little woolly guys? It's incredibly effective against mealy bugs. That's a little woolly guys. Um, and those aphids that um, that I thought were mealy bugs on the on the um, apple tree. <laughs> Sorry, they were woolly aphids. Um, it's also it worked against them as well. You just have to get right in and, and spray right into them because that woolly coating does protect them. Um, it's is effective against aphids you just have to spray i have found you have to do, use it every two or three days i suspect they have a very quick life cycle i know they use parthenogenesis to reproduce um, which means that they can just literally produce a new aphid without needing um, you know it's asexual reproduction so they're very very effective um, at repopulating very quickly so with aphids, get in there and get get into them every two to three days. It does, after three or four treatments of that, I find, thanks, this. After three or four days, uh, treatments like that, I find they're gone. For spider mites in house plants, do it once a week um, for three or four treatments. And if you get everything, if you really thoroughly, if you really thoroughly soak, those plants and get in everywhere it does absolutely get rid of spider mites completely if you're going to use beneficial insects um, with this i suggest use this first to reduce the population you need to leave a little bit of the pest population if you're going to use beneficial insects because otherwise they won't have anything to eat um, so do a bit of research on beneficial insects if you're going to do that on predatory mites and um, on uh, things like lacewings and ladybird um, larvae and things like that. I would use this spray to reduce the population, then um, make sure it's, it, it's not, the spray's not still sitting there, give it a few days and then, or even a week, and then introduce your predatory insect population. All right, so that's about it for me. If you could please subscribe, if you haven't, that would be really appreciated. And if you could give um, down there, if you could give this video a like, and if you even if you want to share it, that would be so brilliant. Um, and any interaction is welcome. I really do always try and answer people who comment because I really like chatting to you guys, and I always learn. I've learned a lot from chatting to people in the comments, so I really appreciate that. Um, and I also, it also helps me out. It, it helps YouTube know that my work here is of interest to people. It helps it, it put the videos in front of more people so I can keep going. All right, thank you so much, everybody. Great to see you. And it's Huru from me, and it's Huru from...